this is going to be the 10 ways GNOME is simply just better. Now, we did a video just like this for KDE, so after this, do go make sure you check out that one. But first, real quick, I need to do a PSA on the pronunciation of GNOME or GNOME. GNOME is the technical pronunciation, but they've also officially said that they do not care if you say GNOME. In other words, it really doesn't matter. And because it really doesn't matter, I often find myself accidentally flip-flopping in between both pronunciations. And due to the length and the subject matter of this video, I can almost guarantee I'm going to do just that. Number one, GNOME apps. They have a huge app ecosystem on the Linux desktop. Now, while it may not have as many professional grade applications like KDE, they have a huge amount of useful tools and utilities that are designed around the GNOME desktop and the GNOME design guidelines. Many GNOME apps are considered the default app for certain tasks, even on non-GNOME desktops. These apps include the likes of the GNOME Software Center, Calendar, Contacts, and Disks, which Disks is honestly my personal favorite partition managing application, but there's also a GNOME developed app for basically everything that you can think of. There's the essentials that you need like Nautilus, Document Viewer, Image Viewer, and File Roller, but they also have other useful official apps such as GNOME Boxes, GNOME Builder, empathy, and connections. However, outside of the core essential set of applications, there's much more. For example, there's GNOME Circle, which contains many community-developed GNOME apps that aren't considered to be core applications. Some of my favorite applications include Text Pieces, an application that allows you to manipulate pasted text in multiple different tools, including YAML and JSON conversions. And then there's Blanket, which is a nice application for ambient background noise, as well as Fragments, which is a beautiful BitTorrent client. I actually have a video where I cover a lot of these different applications so I do recommend you check it out and there's even more apps beyond GNOME Circle that I use every day. Lollipop is an excellent music player with many features including a very easy to use interface, automatic metadata searching, device syncing, and more. Another example of a tool that I've also covered in the past is Bottles. This is used for running Windows applications and games by creating isolated wine instances. Overall, GNOME applications are super functional and because of the design guidelines, with the combination of their toolkits, everything is just elegant. Almost how elegant of an experience it is to use the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Linode actually has a bunch of applications of their own as easy to use one-click installers for various services, websites, game servers, whatever you need hosted on the cloud. They have apps to create your own Mastodon instance, Minecraft, and a whole lot more. And if you don't want to use those applications, you of course can pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions to go ahead and easily spin up your very own Linux server. I've been using Linode for years for all kinds of projects. I would definitely give my recommendation. And if you do want to try them out, you could go ahead and use the link down below to get a $100 60 day credit. And from there, number two, that takes us to good old GNOME extensions. GNOME is really good at being just uniform in general. Everything is as it's supposed to be while allowing you just enough uh, expandability and customization to kind of make it your own. They have a store with a ton of different extensions that you could pick from whether that be something like adding an icon panel or all the way up to changing the entire UI to almost look like a completely different environment altogether. There's basic extensions like Caffeine, which adds a little icon to the panel that toggles auto suspend when needed, all the way up to fun extensions like Compiz Window Effects, which gives you wobbly windows, and Burn My Windows, which does exactly what it sounds like. If you want GNOME to have a more traditional layout, you can install Dash 2 Panel, which turns the panel into a more Windows-like experience, or you can install extensions like Dash to Dock, which will add a dock to the bottom of your screen and makes it somewhat like macOS. Want a traditional menu instead of the full screen Dash that GNOME ships with? Just install Arc Menu and choose between one of the Arc Menus and the mini menu layouts. You can also enhance just the overall default experience a little bit by installing something like Blur My Shell, which will apply a blur across the entire desktop while you're in overview mode or checking out your applications. Because of this extension system, quite a few distros actually use this to make some absolutely beautiful user interfaces. The most known example of this is Ubuntu, which ships its own modified version of Dash to Dock, along with some other branding tweaks. Other distros that do that is Pop OS, for example, which created a whole desktop kind of makeshift environment called the Cosmic Desktop purely through GNOME extensions. 
Although it is worth noting that Pop! OS is working on their very own version of Cosmic that is written in Rust that is not going to be based on GNOME. Zorn OS is another example that uses GNOME extensions to make a whole new experience. That out of the box is a lot more Windows 7 like, but with a layout switcher that allows you to replicate other systems such as Windows XP, Mac OS, and more. In this OS uses GNOME extensions that gives a unique UI where the desktop background kind of acts as its main menu. However, even without extensions, the overall GNOME workflow is what makes it unique compared to other desktop environments. Out of the box, the desktop is blank and just gets out of the way, with just a small panel with the essentials. In order to switch in between applications, you head over to the overview, and from there you can switch in between your open windows and workspaces and launch apps that you need from the dash or the applications menu. One thing that makes GNOME special is the dependence on workspaces. Simply put, if you're not using workspaces in GNOME, you're simply not using it right. While it can work, you're going to end up with situations where you have a bunch of small windows in your overview, making it rather Rather difficult to switch in between them. And that's where dividing these windows in between various workspaces makes it a whole lot easier. When I first boot in, I access overview with the hot corner and then I use my super key along with numbers to quickly launch the applications I commonly use with the keyboard and then use my mouse to position these windows across different workspaces. The more you use GNOME, the more keypad and mouse combos you develop mixed in with the natural trackpad gestures, just the overall experience becomes excellent. Now I did mention this a little bit with applications, but overall just the design of GNOME is remarkable. If you learn how to use one GNOME application, you basically know how to use all of them. This is thanks to Libaweta, which gives GNOME software a consistent look and feel among all the various applications. And this is done by standardizing style sheets and widgets. They have their very own human interface guidelines, and these guidelines include everything from the app name and icons to navigation and adaptiveness. It also has guides on how to use virtually every type of widget you'll need, as as well as what situations you're going to be needing them. Granted, some applications that haven't been updated in a while, such as Rhythmbox, won't really be following this, thus it won't really have the best user experience, like why is this the default in Fedora? However, any modern GNOME application that has been updated in the last year looks great and is probably very easy to figure out. Just look at the latest Nautilus redesign, it's fast, sleek, and very intuitive to use. Outside the apps themselves, the GNOME desktop in general is very well designed with everything polished and well thought out. Just look how general GNOME development works. Before adding any new features, everything is discussed in a GitLab issue with different design mockups and design discussions before it's even considered for inclusion within the GNOME desktop. Even outside the desktop, many GNOME apps have planned mockups too before being implemented into the app. Even if you aren't into GNOME, it's very interesting to read these discussions and learn how software is designed. So number five, GNOME seems to be the most widely picked desktop desktop environment when it comes to the default on many popular distributions. Undoubtedly, love it or hate it, Ubuntu is the most popular desktop Linux distribution on the market. That by default ships with the GNOME desktop. Granted, like we mentioned earlier, it is slightly customized with their very own extensions. With that, GNOME has a massive user base and a lot of eyes on the project. However, if you are one of the many non-Ubuntu enjoyers, there are plenty of other distros that ship GNOME. For example, Fedora, and it's considered to be one of the best out-of-the-box GNOME experiences due to its near vanilla, unmodified nature with a solid base. But if you're looking for more of a stable LTS distribution, Debian also ships GNOME out of the box, although it is going to be a bit of an older version. And if you install the desktop version of almost any RHEL based distro or clone, it is also likely to be a GNOME desktop. So from this alone, most Linux installations in the corporate space are likely to be shipping with the GNOME desktop environment. And that takes us to number six, probably the very most useful feature that is integrated within the GNOME desktop is the global search. Whenever you open up overview, whether that be with your hot corner, gesture, or super key, all you need to do is start typing. Through this, you can search through all your installed applications, quickly navigate to a setting in the control center, and search through your computer's files. Outside of those things, apps can also contribute to a search result. This allows you to do things such as search through your Firefox and 
GNOME web search history, as well as make general web searches through it. Other apps that interface with it include GNOME Calculator to easily run calculations and automatically equating a result, as well as the Lollipop Music Player where you can just type in the name of an album, hit enter, and it will play. This even integrates into the GNOME Software Center, which is nice because sometimes I find myself searching for an application that isn't actually installed, so then I can just launch the Software Center and install it rather quickly. Inside GNOME Settings, you can navigate to the Search tab and toggle between all the different apps and change the order of the search results, which you're probably going to want to do because it can get annoying sometimes when you search for a album or GNOME Software Center and you accidentally press Enter getting a search result from GNOME characters. Number seven, GNOME is designed with multiple types of devices in mind and easily adopts to all of them. This design philosophy started in GNOME 3's development with initiatives such as unified header bars which were a much better experience on devices with touchscreens due to you being able to press buttons on the title bar instead of navigating through things like file menus. This has already made GNOME a great option for touchscreens, but other types of devices have been getting better and better for supporting GNOME. For example, modern laptops with decent touchpads work beautifully with GNOME thanks to the excellent gestures it supports. You can swipe up with three fingers to go to overview, swipe left or right with three fingers to switch in between your workspaces, and overall it just creates a very fluid experience. On top of that, GNOME has been pushing for better support on Linux phones. This all started with Prism's Posh UI for the Librem 5, which was heavily integrated into the GNOME ecosystem and shared many contributors across both the projects. While Posh isn't technically part of the GNOME desktop, it uses the same design philosophy, a very similar layout, and ultimately contributed to LibHandy, a library that allowed apps to be adaptive to work in between the phone and the desktop. LibHandy eventually evolved into Libuida, which is what many GNOME applications use today for its beautiful looks and great app adaptivity. On top of that, recently GNOME developers have been working on mockups of GNOME Mobile, and there is even a function pull request that adds gesture navigation to GNOME on phones. Next up is going to be accessibility. And GNOME has been working on improving this ever since the GNOME 2 days. This started with development of ATK back in 2001, which provided APIs for implementing support for different accessibility features in software. While ATK did have its issues, and it's being phased out in favor of having its functionality built into GTK4, GNOME still has a commitment to maintaining and innovating on its accessibility features. For example, GNOME pioneered Orca, a screen reader which is very popular among the visually impaired users, and has made sure to keep these accessibility features in mind while developing things like Libueta and Gnome 40. If you head over to the control center and accessibility, you can turn on the accessibility menu, which allows you to quickly toggle on and off many accessibility related features, including high contrast mode, which makes elements lighter and changes several icons to black and white and the symbolic versions. You can also turn on zoom, larger text, the screen reader, the on-screen keyboard, visual alerts, sticky keys, slow keys, bounce keys, and mouse keys. In settings, you can also change things like the delay for repeating keys the cursor blink speed, double click speed, and click assistant. Even if you aren't disabled in any way, some of these features can be nice. For example, I always keep the locate pointer option on when having multiple larger monitors and a small cursor, as it can be a little annoying to find that cursor sometimes. The locate pointer option added an indicator for the cursor that makes it easier to find when you hit control on your keyboard. I also like the sound option key, which makes a sound whenever you hit caps lock or scroll lock, which can prevent some awkward situations. Finally, on slower computers, I like to disable animations. And while it does take away some of the smoothness from a computer that is already fast, believe me, a slower computer is a lot worse than having a laggy animation. Number nine, GNOME is backed corporately by many large Linux companies, including massive ones like Red Hat and Canonical, as well as smaller ones like Prism and Endless. These companies support GNOME through their contributions to the project's development, as well as through their financial backing. Red Hat is known for contributing a boatload of development to GNOME, with many GNOME developers also being employed by Red Hat. This allows GNOME to be early adopters for Red Hat developed tech, including Systemd, Pipewire, and Wayland. And outside of Red Hat, many companies contribute to GNOME also, including Canonical, which has contributed to performance enhancements, 
during their transition to using GNOME. Prism was one of the main contributors to LibHandy and Endless as a major contributor to tools like the GNOME Software Center and a major helper with GNOME OS. These are just some of the larger examples that come to mind and there are many other companies and organizations that do contribute to development in various ways. Additionally, many individual contributors also play a critical role into the development of GNOME by providing code, bug fixes, and many other contributions to the project. Overall, the support of these companies and individuals is essential to the continued development and success of GNOME. And last but not least, number 10, no matter what desktop environment you're in, GNOME Tech probably has a very large hand in powering the ecosystem that you're in. Some of Linux's biggest libraries are developed by the GNOME project. For example, GTK 1.0 started as the GIMP toolkit, but might as well be known as the GNOME toolkit because all modern versions of GTK are primarily by GNOME developers with GNOME projects in mind. This is a big deal because a majority of Linux native applications are actually developed in GTK with Qt coming in a close second. So if you're forced to purge your Linux system, for example, of either GTK or Qt, it would probably be easier to purge Qt because many big platform apps use GTK as a backend or have an option for it as a backend, including Firefox, LibreOffice, Thunderbird, and GIMP. But other libraries closely related to GTK are essential to the desktop. And this includes Glib, which is a low level library responsible for managing advanced data structures, threading, and other low level features. GNOME also has a huge part in starting the development of Flatpak, which is revolutionizing app distribution on Linux. On top of that, many other desktop environments are based on GNOME or built around GNOME tech. For example, Mate is a continuation of GNOME 2 due to the controversial launch of GNOME 3. Cinnamon is built on top of GNOME 3's code base originally to provide a more traditional desktop. Pantheon's window manager is a fork of GNOME's Mutter window manager, and Pantheon is also primarily made with GNOME libraries. And finally, Bungie 10 uses GNOME components and is basically an alternative shell on top of GNOME. Although that is changing with Bungie 11 soon, as it's going to be rewritten in EDL instead of GTK, distancing itself from GNOME. And those were just 10 ways GNOME is simply just better. There's going to be a version of this video for a tiling window managers coming up very soon. So do make sure you subscribe. And if you have not seen the version of this video on KDE, I do highly recommend you go ahead and check that out. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and goodbye.